Welcome to the blind battle of the Cavalan Solis line. I'm your host Sam and this is Whiskey and SV. Alright, so tonight we're going to be talking about Taiwanese whiskey and I'm going to be doing a blind of these really amazing Taiwanese uh, whiskeys. So um, specifically, uh, they are the Cavalan whiskeys from the King Car Distillery in Taiwan and they are the Solis line. Uh, which is their single cask, cask strength offering, meaning they are created literally by just taking a cask and pouring it into the bottle and then sending that to, uh, you know, to be uh, sold. Uh, as opposed to taking multiple casks, batting them together, blending them together, and then, you know, possibly even like diluting them down. These are all unadulterated from the cask, unshell filtered, natural color, cask strength. Uh, so that's really great. Uh, the interesting thing about the Soling, uh, the Solis line is that because of some trademark reasons, they're not actually allowed to use the Solis name in the U.S. So uh, except for the uh, one, uh, uh, actually a friend of mine brought for me from Taiwan, and it actually says Solis on it, the rest of them do not say Solis on them, but they're technically Solis uh, whiskeys. They are uh, all pretty young. I mean, I think these are all between five and seven years young. And the reason for that is... Uh, Taiwan has subtropical climate, meaning that it is uh, usually very hot during the day and gets cooler at night. So that causes the cast to breathe and uh, really uh, impart a lot of flavor in a very short period of time. So the angel's share, or basically how much of the cask evaporate, uh, evaporates per year, is something like 2% in Scotland. But in, in, in subtropical climates like um, Taiwan or even in Texas, it's like 12%, which is a big difference. Although I, I do know that uh, at some point, Cavalan put out some 11-year-old and even 13-year-old whiskey, I believe, but they're very hard to come by. So most of the ones that you're going to find are going to be in the order of you know five to seven years old. Now, uh, this th th it's a very new distillery. They started uh, distilling in 2006. Despite that, in 2015, they won the World Single Malt Best uh, Whiskey Award. And that was for the Vinho Barrique, um, which uh, actually, well, this one obviously is not the one that won the award. And really, because it's a single cask offering, it's hard to say that this is going to be as good as the one that won that award. But you can imagine that that's like really puts you on the map. If you just start in 2006 and then or if you yeah. win the Best uh, Scotch Whiskey Award, uh, in the world like and that's not just like for best Asian whiskey it's like the best single malt whiskey uh, which is which is really quite a feat um, so yeah that really put them on a map and uh, I, I've tried all of these and I, I think they are amazing and it's, it's really one of my most favorite distilleries um, uh, unfortunately they are a bit expensive in the US uh, but if you can get them on sale sometimes or if you can have a friend that brings you from Taiwan uh, which uh, fortunately for me, I do have a friend that does that for me some, every once in a while. And uh, yeah, it's like basically half price in Taiwan. So um, it's a no brainer that if you make a trip there or if you have a friend there, uh, get them to bring you a bottle and uh, you will save a lot of money. Um, and uh, yeah, don't let the age like bother you. It, they are really, really amazing whiskeys. Okay, so let's, uh, let's quickly go over uh, what I have here tonight. So, and the first one that we have here is the Cavalan Vinho Barique. And this is the one that won that whiskey award back in 2015. And it is bottled at 58.6% ABV. And you'll see that there's a code up front in, in, at, uh, at the top of that cat's ears. It says W13180968. So what does that mean? The W means wine. So uh, it was aged in vino barrique, uh, which are basically, I think, um, Portuguese wine casks that uh, were shaved and then recharred. Uh, the 13 means the year was uh, 2013 when it was distilled. The 12 means the month was December. And uh, the rest of it is just some cast number or something like that. And then you'll see that on the back, um, it has that matrix coloring 2020, 12, 17. And that was when it was bottled. And it has like actually even the time as well. So that would make this bottle, right, from, uh, let's see, so from 2020, 12, 17, seven years. Uh, it makes it seven years old. So our second bottle tonight is the Cavalan Sherry Cask. And this Cavalan Sherry Cask, as I mentioned before, is 
bottle for the US market. So it doesn't say Solus anywhere on it. It just says cast strength. And in the US, when you see cast strength, that means Solus basically. And uh, unfortunately, the cast number is very faint. So you're going to be hard pressed to read that. And the ABV is also very faint. But let me read the, the, the uh, cast number here. So the cast number is S08122316. S is for Sherry. Uh, 08 is for 2008. And uh, 12 is for the month of December. And the rest of it is some cast number. And um, the bottle date for this is 2014.77. And I think you're going to be hard pressed to read that as well. But it is there, trust me. So that would make this a five year and seven month old whiskey. Okay, so next we have the Cavalan the port cask. So this one is the uh, Cavalan port cask. Again, this is Solis for the US market. So it just says cast strength and it is bottled at 59.4%. The cast number is 00909. So interestingly, you would have expected uh, the first number here to be a uh, P for port, maybe, um, or W for even fortified wine. I don't know, but it's a zero. So the zero zero. Uh, so if you take away the first zero, that means the uh, year and month are zero nine zero nine, meaning it was September two thousand nine, and it was bottled in twenty eighteen. Um, twenty eighteen five twenty two, making it actually the oldest whiskey here, um, at eight years and seven months. Eight month. Eight years and eight months almost. Last but not least, uh, we have the Cavalan X Bourbon cask. Again, this is a uh, cask strength solace, uh, you know, for the US market. Uh, B for bourbon, the cask number starts with B, B0808-25702. And it was bottled at 54.8%. And it was uh, bottled in 2015-0331 at 16.04 p.m. I guess when you say uh, military hours, you shouldn't say um, PM, <laughs> but anyways. Okay, so those are the whiskeys. Um, I'm very excited to do a blind tasting of these. Um, so let's get Lely to come in and shuffle these around so we can get started. All right, Lely. Hi everyone, my name is Lely. I'm Sam Sidekick for the channel and I'm uh, my basically my uh, responsibility has been reduced to just moving the glasses around and let him in so he can uh, pick the correct one if you remember before i had extra time in the chat in the uh, basically in the videos but that's okay um, and uh, by the way oreo said hi to everyone and let's move around You notice what I've done, right? See you soon. Okay, so let's get started. Um, starting with the first one here. Okay, so straight up on the nose, it's very um, red fruits, jammy, kind of like concentrated um, prunes, maybe red cherries, those kind of flavors. Hmm. Oh wow. It is so um flavorful. Just really syrupy, kind of like red fruits, jammy flavors coming out. Um honestly, I, if I was to guess, I think this is the um the Vinho Barrique. Um I remember it. Um I, I know specifically when I tried the sherry, there was those uh sulfur kind of notes that you get with high quality sherry casks uh this one was much sweeter and more prunes and raisins and dates and figs and that's what that's what i'm getting here um i do remember getting those flavors in the port as well but i don't know um but for now i think this is probably the the vino barrique but it could also be um the port so i'll, I'll come back to it let's go on the second one Okay, straight away on the nose, um, it's obviously the sherry one. <laughs> so, yeah, and the, the, there's this sulf sulfury uh, kind of uh, notes, 
uh, and the typical cherry notes, which are like, you know, dark berries and uh, red cherries and black cherries. Um, okay, let's see. Mm. Again, super flavorful, like just really syrupy, jammy flavors coming out and lingering on. Um, there's this like kind of, uh, again, like really like uh, what, what I would say about this one is kind of like a, if you like caramelize, uh, you know, um, oranges um, and maybe some prunes um, and like just let them like marinate. That's that's kind of like the, the fruity flavors that come out of this. Um, it's, you know, some raisin and, and, and figs in, in that as well. It's just so flavorful and that flavor stays. Um, I really like this a lot. Um, between these two, it's hard to say which one I like more, to be honest. But I'm pretty sure that these two are... Um, I'm 100% sure that this one is the, 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 the sherry. Uh, this one, I'll, I'll have to see which one is the port first. I think it's going to be obvious which one is the bourbon because it's actually literally like the ex-bourbon cast like literally tastes like bourbon. Which is this. It, this, this is literally, this literally tastes like a bourbon. Um, it is, um, even though it's a single malt uh, whiskey, um, there's this like very distinct vanilla. There's, uh, there's this peanutty note that I get in Jack Daniels and uh, that's very prominent here. So, but it's, it's clearly uh, the bourbon cask. I mean, it's, there's no doubt about it. Interestingly, the, the, the palette is very different from, I would say very different. It's, it's kind of like a, a wine finished bourbon. Like if you take a, a bourbon and you do a, some wine finishing on it, I think I have a Pritchard Hill, a Jefferson's Pritchard Hill um, whiskey that is finished in Cabernet Sauvignon. This is kind of reminds me of that. And it's, uh, yeah, typical bourbon flavors, but like finish in a wine cast. That's basically what this tastes like. Which is kind of strange because it, there's no wine cask involved here. It's all ex bourbon. It's literally just ex bourbon. The finish on this is much more um, oaky and a little bit bitter. Uh, it's definitely the least favorite of the bunch, uh, but it's still a, an excellent whiskey. It's just compared to the other ones that are so flavorful and full of, you know, these dark, rich fruits. Um, yeah, this one's lacking a little bit. Okay, let's go to the last one. Okay, yeah, this is clearly uh, the port because port has this like molasses kind of, um, you know, uh, if, if you basically take like dark, uh, black cherries and you create an extract from them and then let them age, that's what port tastes. Uh, to me, at least, uh, that's what the nose of a port tastes to me, and it's like dark prunes, black cherries that have been like just kind of made into a syrup and like aged. Uh, that's what that's what that tastes like, and it's very prominent on the nose. Hmm. So this is somewhat of a fresh crack. Um, I opened it for the first time a few days ago. Again, like that, those flavors are. Really amazing. I, th I think the port is actually very close to the Vino Barrique. Um, they're, they're definitely distinct, but um, yeah, there's, again, it's just very red fruits, concentrated, jammy, mouth coating, all coming out. And then this one gets like a little bit, um, yeah, like kind of like the caramelized uh, flavors, which are, um, you know, very concentrated, but also turn a little bit bitter as well. So it has like that orange kind of um, peel uh, that's been uh, aged and, and cooked a little bit. That's kind of like the, in there as well. Mm. They're all so excellent. Okay, so in terms of ratings, I would have to say probably, um, I, I know my least favorite, so I, let me switch this around. So at least the, my, my least favorite is for sure the bourbon one. Um, I would say I really, really like this sherry. I'm just a sucker for this like slightly sulfur note uh, sherry. And it's probably just because it just reminds me of like high quality sherry casts and the first time I tried them. So 
Yeah, so... That's so good. Um, let's see. Oh, but the, this Vino Barrique is something else. It doesn't have any of those, um, you know, sulfur notes, but also it is just so um, rich, full of, uh, you know, dark berries and jammy flavors and figs and raisins. It's a hard choice. I would say probably my favorite is the Vino Barrique, um, followed by um, probably the Port and the Sherry. Uh, I would say, yeah, if, if, okay, final, final. Okay, so it's hard for me to put them like in order. I would say, I think the Vino Barrique is definitely the best one. Um, the Bourbon is definitely the least favorite one. And uh, the Sherry and the Port are pretty close. Uh, but I would say probably if I was to pick one, I would go with the sherry and, uh, you know, but the port would be a very second, uh, close second. I would, so yeah, vino break, um, sherry and port and bourbon. Those are uh, kind of like my order of preference, at least in the order that I have them here. I mean, I could be wrong about the ordering. I don't think so. I, I just, I'm pretty confident about this one. These are very, very distinct whiskeys. They're not things you would, you would really easily... Um, if you've spent any time with them, there's no way you will mistake them, for sure. Okay, well, let's get Laylee to come back and see how I did. Laylee! All right, so... How do you feel? I feel very confident. Super confident, actually. Super confident. Super confident. Let's see. <laughs> da -da -da okay. Number one? Yeah. Yeah, very obvious. Correct. Yeah. Like what made it so? Obvious? I think you should try these though, because these are amazing. And you should tell oh, me which one you think amazing. is the best. I picked this as my number one. Oh, this is actually really good. Really good, right? Generally, awesome. uh, Cavallon is one of my favorite. Oh, really? Yeah, because the whole thing it has a harmony that um, there usually is. The taste is so strong, or the smell is too, um, like. But uh, Cavallon is the one for, for me. Like both thing has a balance and has a harmony that goes together. So. All right. This this is obviously the sherry number two. Two. Yeah, of course. Okay. I'm not happy. Yeah, no, I'm, I there's no way I'll get these wrong. Uh, these are just like so distinct. No, I don't like this. Oh really? Oh, it's because of the the. It's probably because of the sul sulfur note, right? You get some sort of like uh, the sulfur note. You use, use usually say me metal. Metal, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. okay, that's why. Yeah, I understand. Like I, I kind of like that. It's grown on me, but I, um, mm -hmm. I, I understand. Like why starting out, you may not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of Three. Course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So. Okay. So tell me, how, this is port, so. How do you like port? Ah, oh, interesting. I think this is kind of similar to that, but not, mm. not quite. It, it is. It's very. It's, it's different. Yeah. Same family? No, no, it's not. But I think. What is it? Well, they're both Portuguese. This is Portuguese. Yeah, they're kind of same family. This is Portuguese fortified wine. Okay. This is just like regular wine. But so, so if you fortify the wine, I mean, like you know, let let the alcohol. Very the fruity, very earthy. How is I like... didn't get any earthy in that. I get like much more like raisins and like figs and you know and, and this one. I... At least this smells that way. Interesting. Like okay. dry fruit exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think well this is going to be definitely more strong flavors. No. No? But, but very vanilla sweet which it's not. Vanilla? Good. A bit. Interesting. I don't get any vanilla in that. I mean like I usually, the sweetness br brings me the vanilla thingy. I don't know why. I see. So. Okay, well, this is too fruity for me. Oh this my. is too fruity. This is too fruity. Yeah. Well. Da 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 da. <laughs> Number four. I mean, so... obviously it's like that. Yeah. This one okay, is just extra. Bingo. Yeah, it's gonna be very different. The smell is like compared to the other three is very subtle. Like mm -hmm. you don't get anything yeah. specific. It doesn't from have it. like the, any of the like you no. know cask influence. Mm. It's just like plain uh, 
bourbon. Oh, definitely. This is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Is this is, what is this your least favorite? No, or is this your these least? two same level at the end? Oh, really? Yeah, this they're very different, two. but you just don't like them, right? Very different, but I don't mm. like them as much. Okay, okay, cool. The same, uh, uh like tasted, like yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So see, uh, I know what I'm talking about. I'm I'm glad that after a couple of episodes, you finally got them right. No, but I, I think like these are so different that it's like it's just hard to get them wrong. I okay. Mean, yeah, the stuff that I, I've been doing so far. First of all, bourbon, as I said, is I just don't know much about bourbon. And so this like... is my whiskey that I love. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, time to go edit. Um, Thanks for tuning in, guys. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to spend like four hours editing this. So um, please like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not hard. All right. See you next Makes week. Makes us happy. See ya. Bye.